Hello, this is lesson 5 of the cargo lesson series. These lessons are available as videos on my YouTube channel and also as interactive learning materials on www.manila2010.co.uk. In this lesson, I will introduce the international code for the safe carriage of grain in bulk or in short, grain code. I'll also introduce its application from the point of view of passing an orals exam at master's and chief mate levels. The International Grain Code applies to ships regardless of size, including those of less than 500 gross tonnage engaged in the carriage of grain in bulk and to which Part C of Solas Chapter 6 applies. The purpose of the code is to provide an international standard for the safe carriage of grain in bulk. Grain in the code is defined as a term that covers wheat, maize, corn, oats, rye, barley, rice, pulses, seeds and processed forms thereof whose behavior is similar to that of grain in its natural state. Other items defined in the code are the definition of a filled compartment, a trimmed compartment, an untrimmed compartment, a partially filled compartment, angle of flooding, and the term stowage factor. The contents of the International Grain Code are divided into Part A and Part B. Part A contains specific requirements such as application of document of authorization, exemptions for certain voyages, information regarding ship stability and grain losing, optional stability requirements for ships without document of authorization, carrying partial cargoes of bulk grain, storage of bulk grain, strength of grain fittings, divisions loaded on both sides, divisions loaded on one side only, sources, bundling of bulk grain, overstowing arrangements, strapping or lashing and securing with a wire mesh. Part B contains calculation of assumed healing moments in five main sections. Section 1 is general assumptions. Section 2 assumed volumetric healing moments of a filled compartment which is trimmed. Section 3 is assumed volumetric healing moments of a filled compartment which is untrimmed. Section 4 contains assumed volumetric healing moments in trunks and Section 5 assumed volumetric healing moments of a partially filled compartment. Following are some of the main takeaways and points to remember for your orals examination. Documentation of authorization is issued for every ship loaded in accordance with the regulations of the Grain Code. This document is issued by the administration, which is the flag state, or any other organization which is recognized by the flag state to issue such a document. Document of authorization serves as an evidence that the ship is capable of complying with the regulations of the Green Code. A ship may, however, be permitted to carry grain without a document of authorization as long as she meets the additional stability requirements for the ships that do not have a document of authorization to carry grain in bulk. You also need to know the stability criteria for ships allowed to carry grain. Information regarding ship stability and grain loading chapter describes the requirement of providing relevant stability information to enable the master to ensure that the ship complies with the grain code when carrying grain in bulk on an international voyage. Stability Requirements Chapter describes the intact stability characteristics of any ship carrying bulk grain. In particular, the angle of heel shall not be greater than 12 degrees or in the case of ships constructed on or after 1st of January 1994, the angle at which the deck edge is immersed whichever is the lesser. The residual area between the healing arm curve and the writing arm curve in the statical stability diagram shall, in all conditions of loading, be not less than 0.075 meter radians and 
the initial metacentric height after correction for the freeze surface effect of liquids in the tank shall not be less than 0 0.30 meters. Optional stability requirements for ships without documents of authorization to carry partial cargoes of bulk grain describes the condition under which grain can be carried without a DOA. In particular, the total weight of the bulk grain shall not exceed one third of the dead weight of the ship. All filled compartments trimmed shall be fitted with center line divisions extending for the full length all hatches to fill compartments shall be closed and covers must be secured in place if the ship meets such requirements the flag state may allow her to carry grain without having a formal document of authorization in place stowage of bulk grain chapter describes how bulk grain should be stored what should be the strength of the grain fittings and procedures for saucering and bundling of bulk grain, overstowing arrangements, strapping or lashing, and also securing with wire mesh. These things are described in the chapter. Some of the key takeaways from this chapter are that you should level all free grain surfaces and to minimize the effect of grain shifting. The grain shall be trimmed so as to fill all spaces under the deck and hatch covers to the maximum extent possible. After loading, all free grain surfaces in partially filled compartments shall be level. And in any partially filled compartment, grain surfaces shall be secured by overstowing, strapping or lashings as per the requirements of the code. Having a general understanding of the grain code and its content should be satisfactory should a question related to this code be asked. As always, physical browsing through this code should help you in understanding it better. If you work on bulk carriers, I will strongly recommend that you scan the code for details on grain stability and securing of bulk grain through various methods, including the advantages and disadvantages of each securing method. On that note, I am closing my lesson on grain code and I shall see you soon for one of my other cargo lessons. Bye.